hello again, right? This is section C, and this is the bit where you could actually do the wrong question, okay? Section A and B, you can't, you've got to do all of it. But section C is the one where you have to make sure you do the right question. You have to do question three, that's called resource management, and that is a bit about food, water, and energy. Question three, that one there, look. Okay? And I think in the actual exam paper, you've got to colour uh, little bits. I think you have to colour, and you have to take... No, you don't, not for this one. So you do question three, which I'm going to do with you now, okay? And then you've got to pick either four, five, or six. Question four is food, question five is water, question six is energy. And if we just turn over a bit, Mr Terrell, if you look here, you have to make sure you colour a little blob to pick which question you're doing. You're going to do that one. And it says, don't just cross it or tick it or squiggle on it. Colour it in like the correct way. In our mocks, I was looking at lots of people doing the wrong way and you don't get any marks because you haven't picked the right thing. You haven't done what they've asked you to do. So you must, that's a crucial thing. You colour that little bit in there. Question five, we're going to do water. All right, but before we do question five, Mr. Tool's doing that one, aren't you? I'm doing question five, yeah. I'll do question three then. So here we have a figure is talking about areas which are the happiest, okay? And we're instantly looking at this and saying that the HICs tend to be happier than the LICs because their quality of life is lower with the lack of resources and so on. That's basically what you're looking at really here. And they've asked you, what is the difference in score between the happiest and the unhappiest populations shown in figure nine? So you add up the top, you add up the scores, three points, so the, the 10 happiest, so you add up 7.43, 7.56, 7.52, add them all up, total it, then you add up the 10 unhappiest, so like 3.34, 2.90. These are just scores. It's all based on an indices, basically, of like quality of life, like toilets or literacy or employment or GNP and those or GNI, is it those sort of things? Anyway, you add the two up, you add up all them total, add them all up as a total, take it away from each other, and you come up with an answer. And the answer is 4.75, one mark. Seems like quite a long fiddly maths activity for one mark, but that is the way it is, I'm afraid. Okay? Number three, part two, you've got to use that figure, and then for three marks you've got to do your own and explain how the inequalities in the supply of resources influences social well-being. So the difference is inequalities in the resources getting given to what resources have they got, and it's all about people being happy, okay? So... Or unhappy. Or unhappy, yeah. So in figure nine shows that people in poorer countries are unhappy because they cannot access resources. Countries in sub-Saharan Africa... I know it's difficult to see on the yeah, clip, are generally very unhappy, got very low scores. And you can actually quote the scores if you want. Uh, as people's well-being will be harmed because they cannot access adequate food. You know, you have areas of famine in sub-Saharan Africa, places like Eritrea and, and Ethiopia, where it's war-torn as well, which is often another factor um, which can lead to a lack of resources. Um, it's also a poor climate as well, which doesn't help. Um, it's too hot and dry. Um, so these, we've, we've said if we if we've given that one example about food and starvation. Yeah, you can say that they're undernourished. These countries, we're probably probably going to get two marks, perhaps. Let's make sure we make another point. Yeah, so it's to fundamental to health is a clean, adequate water supply. As diseases due to dirty water or not enough to drink will clearly upset people. So dirty water in these places. Um, and the, and the unhappy areas shown will have economic scarcity, water scarcity, sub-Saharan Africa, or physical water scarcities like somewhere like Middle East, so they'll be unhappy. And that will lead to a poor quality of life and social well-being. So just for that three marker, you've already mentioned food, water and war. That's a pretty good way of... So in the supply of resources, what are they talking about? Well, it's talking about water, food and energy, really. Uh, and all those three are lacking in those poor parts of the world, and that's what you refer to. If you haven't got a good lot of food or water, you lead to starvation and malnourishment, don't you? And energy, you don't have a good quality of life with energy as well for, for living, okay? Uh, you could also turn it on its head and say, hang on a minute, that's just um, the, the poorer areas of the world, the LICs, but there are also, we can talk about the HICs, the richer countries, will have means to purchase energy for personal use, and industrial development, so they'll have cars, televisions, uh, warmth in the right appropriate places, and this will make them happy. 
you got examples on the graph, yeah. like uh, sorry, the the graphic, like Canada, Denmark, Iceland, yeah, Norway. cold places, but they've got like happy lifestyles because they've got lots of resources. They have electricity, uh, heating, uh, and they've got adequate food and water supplies. So they're the opposite. So that's all you've got to say. I mean, there's lots of, we're giving you loads of information there. Right, number three, part three, it says, outline one opportunity. So once again, the word opportunity, benefit, good thing, okay? Advantage, those sort of words, okay? Uh, one opportunity created by the changing demand for food in the UK. Do you remember we said, how can we improve, how can we improve the quality of life? Uh, how we can improve food? But one way is through commercial commercial agriculture, uh, so it's large scale agribusiness, and you can uh, produce a lot of like the breadbasket of the southeast of England, where you can make a lot of uh, a lot of crops and high yields, and so people um, uh, will have a lot of food available to them. Another way is because we're in a, in a in a world of discerning tastes now. Organic farming has grown up. Organic farmers have the opportunity to sell their produce to people who want it because there's a changing demand for it, uh, and this will also lead to um, people's personal health improving because they'll want to have organic food, and they'll probably link up with their with foreign trade as well, so they can they can buy in food that's not readily available or grown at certain times of the year, like mange too. I'm going to make a suggestion here, Mr White. You might yep. shoot me down because you are the food expert. I'm not a food Especially expert. Especially chocolate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's but, true. But if there is, when, when this is asking for an opportunity created by change in demand for food, yep. is the change in demand for food partly a requirement for like different tastes, different exotic food? Yeah. And that creates opportunity for business, Yeah. Uh, either in, in retail, um, for the like tastes like, for example, like the Polish shops that have, yeah. uh, have grown up, or the ethnic food shops, perhaps. Yeah. yeah, so it encourages multiculturalism in the city as well, doesn't it? Okay. You know? Right, okay, turn over. Right, this one here, we've been, we're doing this currently at the minute with our Paper 3 resource booklet, looking at water transfer schemes. What's a water transfer scheme? Well, you've got a big reservoir up in the northern part of England where it rains a lot, and it's a big pipe, where the water goes down the pipe, ends up at Newark, and then ends up in the, the water scarce area of um, this area here, the southeast, where there is um, serious water shortage concerns. Lower okay. rainfall and higher population. Lower rainfall, higher population, big demand, and if you remember on our work on our on our on our paper three, they want to build a reservoir there, don't they, which can feed this seven eight million people that live in this area in this hinterland um so the question is asking us so what we've got we've got information there about the population exploding we've got information here about the information about population exploding as well and we've got all the water over here but so we've got all the water in the wrong place the water needs to come over and tip up the country that way so it all ends up over here basically um so using figure 10 and your own understanding suggest how the proposed water transfer schemes will help meet the changing demand for water in the UK. Well, to start with, you, you, you explain that in the northern and in the western parts of the UK, uh, it's wetter, it's more rain because it's more mountainous, and so that has led to there being lots of stores, uh, like Kilda Reservoir in the north, the Craig Gock uh, Reservoir in Wales, um, you've got one in the Severn and one in Tewkesbury, which is over the border, you have one in Birmingham, okay? And what they're trying to do is they're trying to develop the the pipes so they don't leak, and so and they send the water down to areas that are water scarce, like for example London, okay? Um, figure ten provides some of the required information by highlighting the rises in population forecast in Oxfordshire and London, which will clearly create increased demand simply by virtue of there being more people. Figure 10 should be used by reference to areas on the map and or transfer schemes shown and or figures for population. So quote stuff from here into here. Um, the proposed transfers would seem to indicate that this demand will, meet, will be met by transferring water to Oxfordshire and London, um, although they do encourage other uh, ideas as well, not just transferring the water, but ensuring that they have like buildings that are water efficient, toilets that are water efficient, 
they improve the um, the pipes so there's no leakage of the water seeping out so it's wasted water they also try and encourage grey water to be recycled and there's also schemes like desalination schemes put in places where they take the salt out of the water to provide fresh water there are other ideas if they do all those things and move the water as well then the demand will be met and absolutely crucial in a question that is six marks that you quote from the resource that is being provided. Which so, is like what I said about paper three. I've written it on the front of their books. Quote from the resource, use the figures. All right, lovely.